Hello and welcome back. Today we're reacting to some more Kurzgesagt. Today we have a relatively new one just dropped a couple days ago called Ancient Life as Old as the Universe. I don't see how that's possible unless the universe is part of something bigger that makes up some form of life that we can't understand. Other than that, I'm kind of at a loss there, so let's find out together. Life has existed on one planet for about 4 billion years, as far as we know. But it might have started right after the Big Bang, when the universe was much stranger and more fantastic than today. A universe that might have allowed life to develop absolutely anywhere. Hmm. One thing that we know from our one instance of life that exists that we've been able to observe is as soon as life as we know it was possible on a universal time scale, basically as soon as it was possible, it happened. So it wouldn't be surprising if there was other ways that life could form that we don't know of, because once again, our sample size is so small, it's one. If it did form it basically as soon as it could have, life will find a way, as the saying goes. The cosmos might be full of the seeds of life, sleeping in a dead desert, waiting for a few drops of rain to explosively bloom and grow. Tiny and not so tiny aliens might be everywhere. In this video, we're going to put together two highly speculative yet scientifically grounded possibilities. Check out the scientific papers in our sources. To properly explain it... I love the fact that they include their sources. That's one of the things that sets Kurzgesagt apart from almost any other channel out there. They include their source material. You can go research this stuff more if you want to. Let's first look at the paradox of life on Earth. The life paradox. For its first few hundred million years, Earth was a magma hell, constantly bombarded by asteroids. But basically the second things calmed down and the first oceans formed, life just appeared and mm -hmm. zillions of microbes settled every nook and cranny they found. Life is amazing, but the fact that life happened so quickly is something that we just don't talk about enough. It's insane how quickly it happened. This is kind of strange. Life on Earth seems to be almost as old as the planet itself, as if it was waiting around for an opportunity. But life didn't only appear extremely quickly, in that tiny time window, it also crossed a huge gap. To qualify as living things, even microbes need to eat, poop, grow, and multiply. To do that, they... <laughs> what is that pooping animation? Can you see it behind my head? What the heck? <laughs> they need a genome, the biological instruction manual that sets the inner workings of an organism. How dead things with no genome become living things with genomes is one of the biggest riddles of science. Mm -hmm. so well, and the other thing that you have to consider, our sample size is one, right? We don't have more than one instance of life beginning to look at. We can only look at life on our planet because that's all we know of. There may be other life out there. There may be tons of it out there, and we don't know about it. There might be none out there, or it might be extremely rare. So we go by the principle that we are not special in the universe, and our location in the universe is not special. But maybe it is. <laughs> statistically, it shouldn't be. But also, statistically, the only way life can exist is where it's possible to exist, right? So, you know, think about that for a minute. But does life start early and easily everywhere? Is that a common theme? Or... Is it a lot harder, and we just got lucky on this planet that it started super early because of the right conditions, because of our solar system and the gas giants within the solar system, and a million other different reasons? We don't know. We need a higher sample size, which might be really hard to get because the universe is big. Very, very mind-bogglingly, completely understandably big. Simplifying a lot, the problem is that to have a functioning genome, you need proteins. And to make those proteins, you need a functioning genome. Mm -hmm. Both proteins and genomes are super long molecules made of pretty complex blocks that are extremely difficult to assemble by chance. It's a chicken-egg paradox with several chickens and eggs. Once you have a finished mm. cell, the whole system works efficiently. 
But starting from simple dead stuff and reaching that level of sophistication by pure chance should require an amazing amount of time for trial and error. So how yeah. did the first living things manage to cross that gap in just a few hundred million years? Most theories about the origin of life try to explain that gap by theorizing how some primitive soup of prebiotic molecules could have efficiently produced the first self-replicating entities. The other thing that comes to mind is lifespan. So when we're talking evolution on like a human scale, our lifespan's what, like 80 years or so, 85 years, something like that now? Uh, historically, it was closer to about, what, 30 years or something, 35 years. So, you know, there's quite a big difference there. But my point is, even back in early human times, it would take 35 years on average or so for a human to be born, breed, and then die. However, these microbes, these tiny cells, they live and die much faster than that. So it stands to reason that evolution happens at a faster rate because you're going through more generations faster. So I wonder if that plays into this at all a little bit because mutations can happen at a much higher rate than they can in, say, a full-blown human that would benefit actual evolution. But we still don't know how exactly this would have worked. Maybe we need to think backwards. The Clock of Evolution Think of genomes as a book telling the history of life. As time passed and life evolved, more characters were introduced. Amoeba, fish, amphibians, dinosaurs, and mammals. Mm -hmm. Over billions of years, the story of life got more and more complex. A genome can be viewed as a long string of letters with biological instructions. And from microbes to us today, functional genomes seem to have been increasing in size at a fairly constant rate. The functional genome of fish is more than twice that of worms. Our mm. functional genome is about twice bigger than that of fish, and so on. It is huh. a bit more complicated, but for now, let's run with this. When we put all these clues together, it seems that genomes have been doubling in size on average every 350 million years or so. Okay. As if evolution had been following an exponential inner clock. But it gets even stranger. The very first microbes that emerged on Earth, even if they look simple, already seem to have had pretty long and complex genomes. But how could life have achieved that level of complexity in such a short time? There may be an interesting way to solve this riddle. We just take our exponential clock and extrapolate it back in time to the simplest conceivable life form. Mm -hmm. Something equivalent to a being with a genome containing just a few letters. But if we do that, we end up 10 billion years in the past, more than twice the age of Earth, which means if life actually wow. evolved like this, it didn't start here, but somewhere out there in space. What's that called? The panspermia theory or something like that, where life basically traveled here on an asteroid, was deposited and grew from there. The idea being that there's some forms of very simple life, like the tardigrade comes to mind, that can actually survive the vacuum of space and the extreme cold temperatures. So it's not completely unfeasible. That material could have been kicked up in a planetary collision, an asteroid, whatever the case may be. It is quite possible. And if you think of it from that perspective, that's even more impressive <laughs> in my book, honestly. This would explain why life started to thrive so quickly on our young planet. If it was already present in space like a seed, it just needed water and warm temperatures to wake up and go on evolving. And it would also explain the high degree of sophistication of the first life forms on Earth. They mm -hmm. could have been complex already because they might have been evolving for billions of years somewhere else in the universe. But could life really be that old? Maybe, yes. Actually, life could have started shortly after the universe itself was born. Okay, let's hear it. A Goldilocks baby universe. At its most basic level, life needs two things. The right as far as we know it. to form complex molecules and a liquid medium like water in which those molecules can move and interact. The liquid medium needs to stay warm enough to remain, well, liquid. 
<laughs> so when we search for life in space, we focus on Earth-like planets at just the right distance from their star, warm enough to sustain liquid water. But there was actually a time when almost all of the universe might have been habitable. Right really? after the Big Bang, the universe was extremely hot. But as the cosmos expanded, it cooled. And between about 10 and 17 million years after the Big Bang, when the universe was a thousand times younger than today, it was between 100 degrees Celsius and 0 degrees Celsius, the temperature huh. at which water is liquid. So for this window of time, more than 13.7 billion years ago, the whole universe, absolutely every inch of it, had the right temperature to support life. Wow. Of course, the right temperature alone is not enough for life. Still, we also though. need chemical elements like carbon and oxygen, which are forged in the cores of stars. But were there stars in super early cosmic times? Maybe, yes, in regions of the universe where matter was especially dense. Such stars would have been very massive and gone supernova in just three million years, seeding the baby universe really? with the chemical elements needed to form dust, asteroids, planets, and the ingredients of life. Maybe the first ancestors of life were more exotic and didn't even need water, but thrived in substances like ammonia or ethane that can stay liquid at temperatures far below zero degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. They could have been sustained by the lingering warmth of the Big Bang for tens of millions of years longer, well into a time when we know for sure there were stars and all the chemical elements. One of the things that we have to be very careful not to do is assume that we understand how life can form and assume that we know all of the conditions required to support life. We know the conditions to require our life and to support our life and to create potentially our life. This is a very small sample size. There's potentially many other ways that life could form. There's potentially combinations of such that are completely crazy to us that could work. And especially with the changing scenario over the years, the changing environment that the universe has gone through throughout that time period, we know that for our kind of life to evolve, we need a very specific set of variables to be met. But what other types are there? We've talked about silicon-based life before. That's just one other way that we think life could work. And it has some problems. But what else is out there that we just haven't even thought of yet? Because... Why would we? The real magic of this idea is that while the universe today is extremely deadly and hostile, back then, the conditions for life might have been basically everywhere. For a period that may have lasted several dozen million years, primordial life might have been able to emerge on any rock, even between the stars, sowing the universe with the seeds of what, billions of years later, would become bacteria, trilobites, dinosaurs, and finally, us. Wouldn't that be mind-blowing if that was where life originated and has just been spreading all these millions and billions of years and that that's where our original ancestor came from? It's feasible. It's possible. But wow, what a crazy thought. At some point, the universe cooled down below the right temperature for life to thrive, but some of those ancestral life forms may have continued to exist in the internal warmth of the first planets, frozen in asteroids or hibernating in cosmic dust, tiny seeds roaming the cosmos, waiting for new hospitable places to continue evolving. If they did, life now might be everywhere in the universe. Will we ever know? All this makes for a nice story. And while both the habitability of the baby universe and our exponential clock of life are reasonable ideas, they're still speculative. Mm -hmm. One more possibility among many others, trying to explain our existence today. Yeah. But if life came to Earth from outer space, then it should have seeded other places in the solar system too. Maybe there are fossils in dry riverbeds on Mars. Maybe we'll soon find life in the warm underground oceans of Enceladus or Europa. Titan has seas, rivers, and lakes of ethane and methane as warm as the universe when it was 90 million years old. Oh. So finding exotic life on Titan would support the idea that life could have originated in the weird baby universe. 
So far, when we look out into the cosmos, we don't see anyone like us. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's because life needed 10 billion years or more to reach the level of complexity that allows for a technological species. Maybe there are millions of worlds filled with microbes, oceans full of exotic fish, and continents of bizarre animals. And once again, the universe is so big, it's huge. Even exploring our own local solar system is extremely difficult. And exploring it to the point of, say, exploring those giant underground oceans that are under kilometers of ice. Sounds easy if it's on Earth, which it's not easy, by the way. But it sounds easy when you say it out loud. In practice, oh, is it difficult, especially if it's on another planet. Right? So even within our own solar system, it's going to be extremely difficult to find that. How do we even begin to try to explore that outside of our solar system? Humanity's not quite there yet. Maybe we will be one day, but we're not quite there yet. So, yeah, life could be extremely abundant. And we just do not have the tools yet or the ability to accurately search for it. And maybe even others like us that just recently gained consciousness and are beginning to look at the sky, wondering if they're alone. Life could be flourishing right now in uncountable forms and in all kinds of cosmic environments. And if many of us share a common cosmic <laughs> origin, we would all be part of a great cosmic family. The, the eldritch duck. <laughs> Elsa may lie in our cosmic backyard. Let's go and find out. It's time. Wow, what a good video. These guys' art style. I just am always so impressed by it. They do such a good job. It's ridiculous how good of a job they're doing so consistently. And the narrator's voice is just iconic at this point. I cannot heap enough praise on the Kurzgesagt team. They are amazing. And this calendar of theirs, I kind of want one. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you have a wonderful day.